Hello everyone, we've reached now our last lesson in the book of Esther and today we're going to discover how that our God is all powerful. And if you have a Bible, you could look up this little verse and it says in Psalm 147 verse 5, Great is our Lord and of great power. And so this verse is reminding us that God is all powerful. He's not just has some powers, but he has all powers. And here's a big word for some of you older children. God is omnipotent, which means God is all powerful. Now, can you think um, of how the Bible teaches us that God is all powerful? Well, if you go to the very first book in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it teaches us how that an all-powerful God created all things. God just had to speak and everything was created in just six days. And that's something that no other person can do. And then we read in the New Testament how when Jesus walked this earth, he did many, many miracles. And he was displaying the power of God. He was displaying that he was truly the son of God, that he truly was the all powerful God. But, you know, another way God showed his power was in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. Do you remember Jesus Christ became that sacrifice for our sin? Jesus died for our sins on the cross so that you and I could be forgiven. But the wonderful thing, he was buried and then three days later, what happened? He rose again. And so his resurrection shows again about an all-powerful God. And boys and girls, an all-powerful God is the only one who can change a sinner into someone who is holy. It, create, it, it, it takes a miracle from an all-powerful God to do that. But we're going to begin to look again at the book of Esther. And you can le learn this memory verse at home in your own time. But if you've been able to read the book of Esther, and I'm sure some of you older children can do that, you will have discovered that God's name is never mentioned. But does that mean that he is not there? Of course not. I'm sure you've all seen footprints in the sand. And you may not see the person making the footprints, but you know that someone has been there. And as you look through the book of Esther, do you know, we can see God's footprints all over this book. We have discovered already that he is, our God is the sovereign king. And he was directing and putting together the pieces of this story so the big picture would be revealed. He was using circumstances and people to bring his plans together and had the right people in the right places at the right time. Not only did we discover God as a sovereign king, but we discovered that God is holy. He is separate from sin. We've discovered that we have been born as sinners and our sin separates us from a holy God. But a holy God wants to change us to be like him. In the book of Esther, we have discovered how God is faithful. Do you know, he never lets his people down. He always keeps his promises. We've also discovered how God is all-knowing. Nothing takes him by surprise, for he knows everything and about everyone, including the evil and the good. And we discovered that the last time in the book of Esther, how that he knew everything that was happening in Esther's life and what was going on with the Jewish people. And so today's lesson is going to finish us off um, with this book. So we're, it, it, this lesson is from chapter 7 to the end of chapter 10. Now, can you remember where we left off the last time? Do you remember Haman? He had been invited again to a second banquet that Queen Esther had prepared. And so Haman arrived and the king was curious to know what the queen wanted. So he asked Esther again, what is your request and it shall 
be granted. Do you know, Esther knew she was taking her life in her hands again. For if the king rejected her plea, that would be the end. And I'm sure she had rehearsed her speech many times. But you know, now an all-powerful God gave her the strength and gave her the courage to reply. Let me read from the Bible what Esther said. In verses, in chapter 7, verses 3 and 4, Esther said this. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favour in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given be given me at my petition and my people at my request for we are sold i and my people to be destroyed to be slain to perish in other words esther was asking the king let my life and my people's lives be saved for we have been sold to be destroyed immediately the king asked, who is he? Where is he who would think of such an evil plan? Then Esther replied, the enemy is this wicked man, Haman. Well, the king was furious. I'm sure his head was in a spin. First he discovered his wife was a Jew, which meant that he had signed a death warrant for his own wife's life and now his favourite officer was the enemy who plotted the evil law to destroy the Jews. The king got up in a rage and he went into the garden to try and get his head around all that he had just heard. Meanwhile, the pride Haman who had strutted about demanding others to bow down before him, was now found bowing down before a Jewess, begging for his life. This bully was now turned into a whining coward. When the king returned and saw the scene, he accused Haman of attacking his queen. And so the king's servants knew that the crime, the, the result of this crime was death and they immediately uh, took Haman away. One of the king's servants knew about the gallows that Haman had built to kill Mordecai and informed the king about this and so the king said hang him on them. Do you know boys and girls it is a serious thing to be an enemy of God. And we can be sure that enemies of God, that be sure your sin will find you out. Remember, an enemy of God is someone who disobeys God, someone who is separated from God because of their sin. But you know, God's greatest enemy is the devil. And he is the one who wants to destroy your life. But you know, here's the good news. The good news is that our God is an all-powerful God and he has defeated his enemy, the devil, on the cross. Jesus Christ died for our sins, yet by the power of God rose again the third day. God's enemy will try his best to keep you from obeying and following God. He will try to deceive you, telling you, oh, you're a good person. You don't, don't need to be born again. God will allow you to get into heaven just the way you are. He will put doubts in your head. Don't believe God's word. You don't need to believe that. But we know those things are untrue. If you are a Christian, boy or girl, the devil will tempt you to sin. He will try to discourage you and steal your joy. But I want you to remember that our God is greater and he is all powerful. Do you know, the Bible reminds me that when I become a Christian, when I have had my sins forgiven, when Jesus Christ is my saviour and Lord of my life, the Bible teaches us that God then has given us his power. The Bible teaches us that God's power works in us. 
it strengthens us, it changes us, it makes us uh, uh, more like Christ. It gives us the power to live Christian lives to please God. God's power, boys and girls, keeps us. Do you know, we can't keep our own salvation. We could never live lives to please God on our own strength. But it's God's power that keeps us. And it's God's power that works in us. No matter what we face as Christians, we have the power through Christ to overcome that problem. We can do nothing in our own strength, but with God, all things are possible. For he is an all-powerful God. Well, the king promoted Mordecai. He was now second in command to the king. Even though Haman was now dead, his evil plan still lived. And there were only now nine months left before the Persians would destroy the Jews. Esther's people were still in danger. And you know, Esther had a great concern for her people. I wonder as a Christian, do you have a great concern for those who are in danger? Do you care that there are people around you who are lost in their sin and separated from God? People who have never heard the gospel message? Do you know when we are born again and become part of God's family, then God calls us to serve him. The Bible tells us Jesus' own words says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God is the only one who can save, but he gives us this special privilege to go take the gospel message, the good news of the gospel into all the world. And that includes places like Bambridge, like Dromore, like Lurgan, like Tandergay, like Portadown, to share with others the wonder about a wonderful saviour. You know, God may not call you to be a missionary overseas, but he calls you to be a missionary where he has placed you. God had placed Esther in the palace for a reason and God has placed you just where he wants you to be. Boys and girls, God is all powerful and God will never ask you to do something without giving you the strength and the power to do it. Remember God, the Holy Spirit, now lives in us and he will be with us wherever we go. He helps us to speak to others. He shows us and helps us what to say to others. You know, God can use you to invite others along to Sunday school, along to Good News Club. He can use you to tell them about your saviour. You see, when Jesus Christ is your saviour and king of your life, then he equips you with the power to serve him. Because great is our Lord and of great power. And I want you to remember, for with God, with your God, nothing shall be impossible. Well, Esther, in her own power, could never save the Jews. But God was with her. Esther knew that she had to do something, so bravely approached the throne of the king to plead for help. You know, boys and girls, you might find it hard to speak to others, but here is something that you can do. You can pray for others. You can pray for those who can't pray for themselves, unsaved family, friends, Neighbours, teachers, classmates. Esther was pleading to the king for her beloved people, the Jews. But did you know that the Bible teaches us that God still wants us today to pray for the Jewish people? He wants us to pray that they will be saved. You see, this group of special people, God's special people, the Jewish people, they don't believe that Jesus Christ has come. They don't believe that Jesus Christ 
came to be their saviour. They only believe the first part of the Bible and they are still waiting for their Messiah. And we have to pray that God will open their eyes and show them that their Messiah has come, that Jesus is their saviour. Well, Esther fell down at the king's feet and through tears she pleaded with the king to write another law to stop the wicked plan of Haman. But the king, he agreed and, you know, he instructed Esther and Mordecai to write in the king's name whatever they thought best for the Jews and to seal it with the king's signet ring so it cannot be changed. Esther and Mordecai quickly got to work writing the new law. In the law it was written that the Jews were allowed to come together and defend themselves against the attack on the 13th day of the 12th month. The law was written and it was sealed with the king's ring and then sent throughout the empire by riders on horseback. There was great celebration in the Persian Empire when the Jewish people received the good news that they were no longer afraid of these attacks. You see, Esther's tears had now turned into rejoicing and the Jews' mourning and fasting had now turned into feasting and celebration. But the 13th day of the 12th month finally arrived. But the Jews were not afraid. But they still knew that they had enemies who were anxious to destroy them to do so that they could take their homes and land. We read in the Bible that in Esther chapter 9 verse 1, that that day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them. But remember, God is all powerful. And on that day, listen to this, 75,000 enemies of God were killed. 75 thir Persian, Persians were killed. Those people who had disobeyed the king and attacked the Jews. In Shushan, 500 Persians were killed. And you know, Haman's 10 sons had tried to attack the Jews. But God, who is all-powerful, did not allow the enemy to win. And so Haman's ten sons were hanged on Haman's own gallows. At the end of that day, not one Jew was missing. You see, the all-powerful God had kept his people safe from the enemy. And this is something, boys and girls, for us to really uh, get a grasp of. An all-powerful God will always keep his people safe. He will be with you whatever you have to face. Yes, there will be difficulties that come into our lives, but we don't need to be afraid. Do you know one servant of God, a man called Job, he faced many difficulties, many trials, many hardships but yet he was able to say I know that thou canst do anything. He realised that his God was an all-powerful God and so he put his trust in his all-powerful God. Well the Jewish people established a special day of celebration, the Feast of Purim which is celebrated and was continued to celebrate each year to remind them of how God had saved them from being destroyed by their enemy. They would have gone, the Jewish people would have gone to their synagogue and listened to the book of Esther being read year after year. But you know, as a Christian, we might not celebrate this feast, but we can rejoice with the Jews how God saved his special people for a special reason. You see, for the Jews gave us the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, which gives us the true knowledge of the true, one true living God. It was from the Jewish family that our Saviour, Jesus Christ, came from. 
The first Christians were Jewish believers. The first uh, missionaries were Jewish. You see, only God could see how all the pieces of history would be put together to reveal his plan in providing salvation through Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, never forget, our God is all-knowing. He knows your need. He knows your greatest need is to be saved from your sin. And when you are saved, then he wants you to talk to him and tell him your needs. God is all is holy and he wants you to be more like him. He wants to change you to be more like Jesus. God is all powerful. And he is able to forgive you. He's able to set you free. He's able to change you. And he gives you the power then to live a Christian life that is pleasing to him. He is able, his power is able to keep you. God is faithful. He will never let you down. His promises are always true. They never fail. Isn't it wonderful how God, the sovereign king, thought of every tiny detail to put the pieces of his plan together so he could save his people and so that we today could have a Bible to read and a saviour to love and a king to serve. If you're a true Christian, then your God is ordering your life. He has thought of every tiny detail. Things in your life, boys and girls, don't happen by chance. Yes, there are many things you don't understand why they happen and maybe you want to try and fix. But God is at work and he is the great designer of your life and will order every detail. Your life belongs to a wonderful God who has a plan for you. And he will bring together each piece of that plan. Only God can see what his plan will reveal. But you know, we can be sure that his plan will be perfect and it will work for our good and for his glory. As I close, I trust and I pray, boys and girls, that Jesus Christ is your saviour and king. Let me finish with a little chorus that we would sing sometimes at One Way Club or at Sunday School. And I'll not sing it, but I'll read the words. It says, let the Lord have his way in your life every day. For there's no rest, there's no peace until the Lord has his way. Place your life in his hand. Rest secure in his plan. Let the Lord let the Lord have his way. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to these lessons. And I trust these lessons have been a help and a blessing to you. And you, it will give you a greater desire to get to know the wonderful God of the Bible. I trust, boys and girls, that we will see you very, very soon. God bless. Bye-bye.